Hi, this is Daniel Odio with Drodio Real Estate. If you're like a lot of our clients, you have uh, many questions about short sales and foreclosures and auctions and REOs and uh, third-party approvals from banks and that sort of thing. So the purpose of this video is to take you through a piece of that, which is the auction process. Now, there's several types of auctions, and for a really detailed timeline of how the whole process works, take a look at the link that's uh, below right here, which will walk you through the short sale to foreclosure, to auction, to REO, and then another auction process. Uh, right now we're just going to focus on the courthouse auction piece, which is one component of the whole process. So uh, again, take a look at our website, which is below there, uh, if you'd like to learn more about the whole process. And also, this is a, a long video because I wanted to include the whole process, but if you don't want to listen to all the details, you can just fast forward to where our logo is inserted. We've inserted our logo between um, different sections of the video, so you can just, just skip to those parts if you don't want to hear all of the details. So again, my name is Daniel Odio. I'm the owner of Drodio Real Estate. We're happy to bring you this information, and uh, if you'd like to sit down with me to have coffee in the D.C. area and talk about your home buying strategy, I'd be happy to, uh, to buy coffee and we can sit down and chat about exactly what you're looking to do. Enjoy the video. One of the first things you'll learn is that auctions don't always go off like they're supposed to. Take a look. So I'm here at the Alexandria Courthouse for an auction that's supposed to take place at 3.30 today. But uh, it's 3.30 right now and there's nobody here. I was just speaking to the security guard who said that sometimes the auctions don't happen because the lien, the foreclosure, is satisfied, meaning you know, the, the, the seller of the property pays up before it goes to auction. So we're going to hang out here for a couple minutes and see if anybody shows up to actually conduct the auction. He was, uh, the security guard was saying that sometimes nobody even shows up, so there's a gentleman standing out here trying to conduct the auction, but there's nobody to even bid on the properties, or sometimes it's only one or two people. It's just amazing to me how inefficient a market this is, where there's properties that are selling uh, potentially for less than market value, and there's nobody here to, uh, to take advantage of it. The auction was published in the newspaper, yet nobody's shown up. It's just amazing to me. We're coming to the Arlington Courthouse today. There's supposed to be an auction. We'll see if we have better luck than we did at the Alexandria Virginia Courthouse. So let's uh, see if we can find it. So I went inside to ask if there was an auction being held today, and they said that um, a lot of people have been asking about it, but they didn't know anything about it. And uh, it doesn't appear to be happening. It would be happening right here on the steps. So again, another experience where uh, it's supposed to be happening, and um, it just didn't probably because the the trust was paid off by the uh, by the person who was being auctioned it might have been a tax lien and they paid their taxes or uh, they weren't paying and, uh, and then they decided to pay before the property got auctioned so looks like we're out of luck again but we'll keep trying see if we can get you some good auction footage we caught up with a gentleman who was waiting for the auction to start so it was a promising sign let's see what he had to say foreclosing yes uh, then uh, which would be the, the, the bank, the first the lien bank, holder. Yeah, that, yeah yep. the first lien holder. But you have to remember there's unpaid real estate taxes in front of that. Now, that automatically becomes a lien. Right, so sure. So when you, when you prepare a bid, you know, you have to, you know, consider that, too. You and know. So we, you always have to do, anybody that's serious has to do a, a, a complete lien search. Uh, so what you read in the paper is just, it's just a uh, legal foreclosure notice. notice. right. And, and and you see the you know the, uh, the the first lien holder is not worried in anybody behind him. Right. You know, he's not if worried about if there's the a second, second trust, trust or yep. anything else. You know, he's only worried about everybody in front of him. So you know right. these uh, the people that uh, hold a second trust and all may not even get legal Good. notification of the sale. They have to notify everybody ahead, but not they don't necessarily. I think in the state of Virginia have to notify everything behind. A lot of, you know, they do as, as a courtesy. Sure. You know, yeah. But, uh, I don't think they have to. Now, can they block the the sale, the second lien holder? Can they keep the first lien holder from foreclosing no, and taking it to they auction? They intend to sale and protect their position. And how does that process work? They would they would make they would enter a bid, which would include the what? first, you know, right. one dollar over, you know, one dollar. So protected. It, so protect so their interest, it, yeah. if the first trust is $100,000 and the second trust is $25,000, they'd offer one twenty-six dollars to protect their position? Is that... They would have to offer $101. $101 so that 
you have to take out the first. Right, right. But then, wouldn't they be on the hook to buy it for 101 if nobody else yes. bid? Yes. As a second, yes. so yes. a second lien but you holder. Have to, you have to determine whether you have a adequate equity in the property. You which, know. yeah, that's and the big problem these days, right? right? That's yeah, exactly yeah, right. sure is. That you have to know what the property is worth. You have to know what the property looks like inside. You know, uh -huh. see uh, what you read in the news. They're not obligated to give you pictures. They're not sure. Obligated they could be a big hole in the roof anything, or right. whatever. And another and another consideration is, you know, just because a foreclosure sale is being held does not mean the property is unoccupied. Yeah, the sure. So you have to get people out. out. Right. You may have to go through a, a buyer may or may not have to go through an eviction process. And that can that. be fun, I'm, I'm and sure. That can be enough, that. Enough, another whole, you know. So anybody that is going to think that they can buy a property, you know, for fifty dollars or something yeah. like that in front of court, and it's problem free, it's, it's not going it, to happen. happen. Right. No, it's not going to happen because generally when it gets to this point, you know, there's issues. So the whole tax lien thing would be. You might spend $101,000 to pick the property up for more than the trust yeah, is, but yeah, there could be yeah, tax yeah. liens that you don't know about, right? Yeah, I yeah. Mean, well, the, tax, the, the unpaid taxes on this, on this property is uh, 6714 Oh, okay. All right. See, they, uh, they, it's unpaid for 2006, so that becomes a lien. So they and never so paid far, their taxes in 06, and they haven't paid in 07, 07 either. 07, right. So that's what to do now. Uh, and that, and that is, and that is first. This, yeah. this is ahead of the whoever holds the sale. Yeah, which should be happening. Real, real soon. estate taxes, you know. So if if you were to pick that property up for one hundred one thousand dollars, you'd have to pay an, an additional sixty seven hundred dollars of taxes in order uh, yeah, to. Oh yeah, you're to, responsible to, because to, you're the owner. Sure, right, yeah. exactly. Taxes follow. Taxes but, do not follow the person. Taxes, taxes follow, follow the property. The property. But unless you did the research to see that there were $6,700 in taxes, you wouldn't necessarily know that's it. That's right. That's right. That's right. Or any other subordinated lien or anything in front of it. Right. You know. and the only thing that a newspaper tells you that this deed of trust holder uh -huh. is foreclosing. Right. Uh, and, and the way it's wording, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is the first deed of trust. Oh, uh, interesting. You know, it's just, what I, if think the, I think the notice just says that it is a that it is a deed of trust. We'll take a look here. And, uh, so this is from the paper. You saw this in the paper. They published these in the paper. It says Alexandria right. City. Yeah, execution of a deed of trust and the original principal amount of 245 uh -huh. with an annual interest rate. See, so it doesn't say right. whether it's the first or second. Now you can probably, looking at the amount of money, you can assume that it's Now, the first. what do you think this property is worth? Have you done research to see? Well, I live at this address. Oh. The condominium. Oh, I see. All right. So you know the building. Property. I know the building. Ah, so, interesting, interesting. So, so, so I'd say that that piece of property should be worth. Um, it's, a, it's a three bedroom condominium. Oh, wow. I do not know what the, uh, the condition of it sure, is. Sure, because they could have been. The, it should be worth 345 to Okay, so so, like so your that. total potential cost in, in it might be something like 245 plus six. About six thousand and plus um, in taxes. Plus, uh, plus you may have to fix it up. So you're right. potentially getting something for about two fifty, two fifty two. Right. Right. That might be worth three fifty or so. That, might, that may, that may be. Maybe right. That's the, 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 the maybe. Is, may is the opposite word. And are you here to put a bid on? Uh, or are you I, just kind of looking at it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see who else shows up and see that sort of thing. Up, yeah. Because just because it's being bid at 245 doesn't mean it's going to sell for 245. It's going to be bid up by bidders here. It could sell well, for 300 general, or something. Generally, there's two people here. The it's amazing. Here and the lawyer representing the, the trust. How many people usually show up for these auctions? Very I mean, few. It, two or three. That's a, and that's why we're doing this video, everybody, is so that you can understand how this process works. But there are a lot of risks in the process. It's not, it's not like buying a regular property where you can inspect it. I mean, can you even inspect the interior of these properties? No. Right, so you you're just no kind of... Right. Not yeah. until you own it. Right, so you might go for the first time and find that it's been stripped down to the studs or that's something. Exactly right. That's uh -huh. exactly right. Have you purchased properties at auction before? No. All right, no. so... so I participated in that in, through, through my... Uh, my uh, position, uh, yeah. I've, I've uh, been involved in foreclosure sales. Sure. Generally, this is more foreclosure sales of commercial properties uh -huh. and businesses. So, but the auction process is virtually the same. And if you had any tips for people that were thinking about this, is it is this not something for people that are a faint, is, faint of heart? It, or? Is not, it is not for the ordinary person to yeah. do. And it's not for the person that, uh, that really wants to get rich quick. Yeah. Because yeah. it sounds better than it is because yeah. there's a lot of Problems in it, 
uh, there's a lot of unknowns. Yeah. Like people still in the uh, still people still inhabiting the building. You may sure. Have to, you may have to go through a separate court process just to uh, evict, evict people them, in. and that could take months. And, and that then that you're paying a mortgage on it. Yeah, right. sure. Right. Understood. And that's, a, that's another big portion. You know, these costs, especially in the condominium, the condominium fees and the electricity and so may not have been paid either. May not have been paid. Plus, they're still ongoing, you know, yeah, sure. even even though you cannot sell it or you cannot put a renter in there or something, those expenses are still ongoing that have to come out of the new owner's pocket. So, yep. there is a carrying charge. Wow. You know. well, what's your first name? Bill. Bill? Well, I'm Daniel. Thank you so much for the info. Well, we, we Let's shall, see if we, we can find see. Yeah. We We're going to see if the, uh, if the auctioneer shows up here. He may be too, honestly. We're at the Alexandria Courthouse right now, and we're just going to see now. You'll notice that, that there's really nobody else here. So if Bill wants this property, um, he might be the one who gets it because there, uh, there's really no one else here. And that's the amazing thing about these auctions is that, you know, a lot of people don't know about them. Now, you were mentioning earlier that at 329, the person could show up and just pay their their first trust bill, right? I mean, I because assume, we I came last week I, and there was nobody here. I assume that they, they can work out a deal with the uh, with the uh, first trust holder yeah. to pay them past due, uh, or they could file a, a form of bankruptcy, which would would stop stop the sale. The sale. It yeah. does not stop the foreclosure huh. of the property. When you have a first lien on the property, yep. you can immediately go in and ask for a, a lien holder's relief. Right. And, and then, then the and bankruptcy then court has will, to negotiate. The bankruptcy court will will uh, give you the right then to yep. foreclose. So so a bankruptcy can only stop something temporarily. And that's probably what happened last week because we came last week. There was a notice and there was no, no notice. nobody here. Yeah, hey, he didn't show up. So that's another thing about these foreclosures and auctions is that you just uh, you don't always know if it's really going to happen or not. So again. This is Daniel Odio with Jodio Real Estate, and uh, we'll see what happens with this auction. So the auctioneer is here, and he has uh, requested that I respectfully not show his, his, his face, his front profile, so I'm going to do my best not to do that. Um, you'll notice that, you know, we're at the courthouse steps here. Bill is the only person here to, uh, to bid on the auction. So, I mean, this is amazing. There's a property that's going for $100,000 below value, and there's just nobody here to buy it. I mean, take a look around. It's completely vacant. He's doing fine now. <laughs> so he's trying to decide right now if he's going to put a bid in or not, you know. Not completely sure about it, but uh, I'll tell you, with no competition, it's not a bad, not a bad option. It's a little difficult to understand what happens next, but basically, the property that Bill, the gentleman who's there, uh, came to buy is not the property that's being auctioned, so you'll see that Bill is realizing this in a second here. Today is the 19th at 3, yeah. at, uh, 3 30 for 200 North Pickett, unless that has been stopped. Uh, it was probably canceled. Uh, and, uh, oh, so you're not here for uh, North Pickett? Yeah, I. Uh, uh, well, sometimes sales are canceled. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. The, this morning was still going on. He said just a few minutes ago it was still going on. I had two of this, that were supposed I, to go this morning for uh, for Alexandria. That, uh, that I forget the address for the one that came off, but that maybe that could have been the one that came off. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Interesting. So you're here for Stevenson. Yep. What's the starting price for the Stevenson property? Oh, let me uh, announce. Let me read. Yeah. Let me read out the. Uh, okay. So this is something that you have to read. Yeah. Okay. That's it. I won't get your face. Okay. Trustee sale, 6300 Stevenson Avenue, number 509, Alexandria, Virginia, 22304. The following are uh, additional terms and conditions that apply to this sale today. The buyer acknowledges the following terms. That the property sold subject to conditions, restrictions, rights of way, easements, and reservations of any record. Filed and unfiled mechanics. The auctioneer reads a long document, which I'm going to leave here if you don't want to listen to all of it because it is long. Just skip to the next part where the logo shows up. That'll be uh, after all of this information. Time of the foreclosure sale affirmatively states that such figures are approximate amounts only. The project is subject is sold subject to the rights of any occupant. The trustee is not obligated to pay property agents. 
Conveyance by deed and bill of sale as applicable shall be with special warranty and shall be subject to all recorded and unrecorded liens, including but not limited to tax in the United States attorney liens and or the right of redemption of the IRS and or the United States special assessments by local government authorities, condemnation actions, demolition liens, any other suits of whether at law or equity or in or, and or probate proceedings, wetland laws and governances, security interests, interests, easements, rights of way, covenants, conditions, restrictions, leases, and mechanics liens or and material liens, liens to the extent of uh, any of the foregoing may lawfully apply to the property being sold or any part thereof and taking priority over the liens and security interests of the deed trust. The conveyance to the buyer will be by special warranty deed purveyor by the trustee at buyer's expense of $150 in addition to the sales price set forth above. The property is sold as is, whereas without warranty of any kind, no representations or warranties are made as to the zoning, structural integrity, physical condition, adequacy of, of access and egress, availability of any public utilities, environmental condition, construction, workmanship, materials, habitability, fitness for a particular purpose, marketability of title, or merchantability of all or any of the part of the, any of the property being sold. The foregoing disclaimer of uh, representations and warranties is not intended to void or impair any liability or obligation if any, uh, any other party may have with respect to all or any part of the property being sold. The property recognizes and agrees, the buyer recognizes and agrees that any investigation, examination, or inspection of the property being sold at, uh, sold is sort of under the control of the owner, the owner of the first party, and the subject of the degree agents, and not within the control of the subject of the trustee, and no order of control of their assessor of the signs. Time is of the essence and closing of the, the purchase of the property. Apparently, the closing agreement will allow the time to be able to complete foreclosures and uh, process automatic foreclosure and complete the process without prior written notice of the same. Uh, buyers shall buyers shall remit the balance of the sales price to certified funds without uh, trustee having to request the same from buyers. In the uh, event of the default by the successful bidder, the deposit shall be forfeited and applied to the cost expenses of sale and subsequent trustees fee and or the secured deadness. There shall be no refund of deposits. Such for, uh, forfeiture shall not uh, limit any liability of the defaulting buyer or any of the rights or remedies of the substitute trustee or the note holder with respect to any default. The defaulting buyer shall be liable for all costs of resale of the property, including attorney's fees of the note holder and the substitute trustee, and plus the, any amount by which the ultimate sale uh, price for the property is less than the defaulting buyer's bid. Uh, after any such a default and and forfeiture of the property may at the discretion to, of the substitute trustee be conveyed to the next highest bidder on the, uh, the property whose bid was acceptable to, acceptable to the trust substitute trustee. Buyer agrees that any uh, that in any suit, whether at law or equity, where the trustee has to enforce or defend this memorandum of sale against the buyer, buyer shall be responsible for reasonable attorney's fees and costs incurred by the trustee for such suit. Buyer so is, shall be solely responsible for all closing expenses except grant tourist tax, which will be paid by the seller. Taxes prorated through the date of the sale will be paid by the seller. Buyer agrees to reimburse seller for uh, prepaid taxes. Buyer also agrees to, to roll back the taxes if applicable. And any any and all amounts claimed uh, owing by the homer, any homeowners association, condo association, or and or mutual cooperative association. If after the sale uh, has been conducted, trustees buy the stuff of bankruptcy filing prior to the time of sale, which uh, affects the validity of sale, the buyer uh, acknowledges that the sale may be void and be subject to uh, cancellation by the trustee. Should this occur, trustee shall promptly refund the deposit to the buyer, after which uh, the parties shall be relieved of, uh, of all further liability to each other. Uh, if any delay, if the delinquent account of the property owners was reinstated or paid in full directly with the note holder, uh, mortgage service or trustee's office, or a uh, payment plan uh, for forbearance agreement, short sale, or any other agreement between the mortgage, mortgage service or bar, uh, and borrower which is intended to stop the foreclosure was entered into either written or verbal uh, prior to the sale and notice of funds and notice of the, uh, the agreement was not communicated to the uh, trustee prior before conducting sale. The buyer shall accept the return of his or her deposit and cancel this memorandum of sale after which the party shall be relieved of all further uh, liability to each other. In the event of trustee's deed or deed of uh, foreclosure has been recorded and the trustee determines in his discretion that it is necessary to rescind the foreclosure sale, the trustee reserves the right to nullify the trustee's deed or deed of uh, foreclosure and re pass the title to the mortgage or prior owners uh, subject to the uh, deed of trust upon which was foreclosed. Substitute the trustee reserves the right to uh, amend or supplement the terms of sale by verbal announcements during the sale, reject all periods, extend the time to receive bids, withdraw the property from the sale, waive or modify the deposit requirements, recess the sale, and conduct uh, such other sales as substitute the trustee may determine in its discretion and or extend the period of time for settlement. Should the trustee be unable in his sole discretion for any, any reason to convey title to this property, then it shall be a term of uh, sale that this uh, buyer, that the buyer's sole remedy in law or in equity shall be refund, refund of the deposit only. Upon refund of the deposit, the sale shall be void and of no effect. If the suit challenging the sale is 
filed in a court of competent jurisdiction, whether at law or in equity, prior to the closing and receipt of funds, such trustee in his discretion reserves the right to set aside the sale, cancel this memorandum of sale, and return the deposit to the buyer without any further liability to the parties. The sale shall be complete and final upon the signing of memorandum of sale and insertion of the time of execution by the parties. Buyer is prohibited from initiating or completing any repairs, modification, or alterations to the foresaid property until the balance of the purchase price is paid in full to the trustee. Risk of loss from buyer, casualty, common denomination actions, whether or not notice was given by posting the property or otherwise, or other causes of loss, and all liabilities of ownership of the property passed to the buyer upon execution of this memorandum of sale. Any damage occurring to the property during the settlement period is solely at the buyer's risk. Buyer shall put the lot of time regardless of any title defects or issues. In certain cases, the trustee has discretion to grant an extension, which will require, which beginning after the 16th sale and continuing through the date the trustee receives funds, and buyer shall pay per diem interest in amount to be determined on such extension, not to exceed 30 days. Any request for extensions must be submitted in writing and acknowledge and agree to pay said per diem interest. Said extensions are not automatic and will be approved by the trustee on a case-by-case basis. In any event, the buyer shall be responsible for any and all per diem interest approved from 16th day onward as a result of any extension granted to close on the said property. This memorandum of sale, the contract shall be governed and by construed in accordance with the laws of the Commonwealth of Virginia and buyer consents to the jurisdiction and venue of the Circuit Court of the City of Richmond, Virginia, and further agrees that any and all causes of action arising from under this memorandum of sale by and between the trustee and buyer shall be brought, shall only be brought in the Circuit Court of the City of Richmond, Virginia. If any provision of this or part of this memorandum of sale is deemed invalid by a court, the invalidity of that provision shall not affect the remainder of this memorandum. Wow. Trustee sale, 6300 Stevenson Avenue, number 509, Alexandria, Virginia, 22304, Alexandria. In execution of deed of trust in the original principal amount of $232,600 with an annual interest rate of 6.575% from Aminata Summa dated July 13, 2005, recorded in the clerk's office of the Circuit Court of Alexandria, City, Virginia, instrument number 05002435-4 at page 374. People having the current appeal of the note thereby secured in the request of the holder of said note, the undersigned substitute trustee will offer for sale a public auction at the entrance of the Circuit Court of Alexandria, City, located at 520 King Street, Alexandria, Virginia, on October 19, 2007, at 3.30 p.m. The property described in said deed located at the above address and briefly described as unit number 509, Sentinel at Landmark Condominium, as the same as duly dedicated, planned, and recorded in deed book 1033 at page 327 with an undivided interest in the common areas. In terms of sale, deposit of $20,000 or 10% of the sales price, whichever is lower. Cash or certified check will be required at the time of sale of settlement within 15 days from the date of sale. Additional terms may be announced at the time of sale. Additional terms have been read. Pursuant to the Federal Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, we advise you that this firm is a debt collector attempting to collect the indebtedness referred to herein, and any information we obtain will be used for that purpose. Samuel I. White, PC, substitute trustee. Now that he's done reading all that long document worth of information, he's going to give an opening bid for the property, so watch what happens here. The opening bid for 6300 Stevenson Avenue, Alexandria, Virginia, is $235,000 going once, $235,000 going twice, third and final call sold back to the note holder at 3.40 p.m. Well, at least he got a witness. How often does that happen where nobody bids? I guess it varies. Like percentage of the time? I guess I couldn't really say percentage of the time. It depends on the real estate market. Yeah. It's amazing that nobody was here. I just can't even believe it, you know? If nobody shows up, do you still have to read the whole thing just to the court, to the empty courthouse? Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I have to read it whether there are 100 people here or nobody's here. Yeah. So here's the amazing thing about that price, $235,000 that the auctioneer was auctioning the property off for. You're probably not going to be able to see this 
uh, on your screen, but I pulled the comps of all the properties that have sold since January of 2007, and the uh, same number of bedrooms and bathrooms in the same building. So this is the same building uh, properties that have sold in 2007. One of them sold for 227. It was on a higher floor on the seventh floor. One sold for 233. That was on the ninth floor. And then there were one, two, three, four, five, six that sold higher than 235. One for 240. One for 245. 255. 264. 267. And 289. Uh, that was on the 10th floor, the 289, not the most expensive. So, you know, potentially you might have been getting a, a, a bit of a discount, but, you know, there's properties on higher floors that sold for uh, $7,000 less than the starting bid price. And keep in mind that if the seller's not paying their mortgage, they're probably not paying their taxes either. So there's very likely, just like Bill found unpaid taxes for the property he thought he wanted to buy, there's very likely unpaid taxes for these properties that uh, that are being auctioned off. So your liability uh, might not stop at uh, you know at just buying the property. So you know that's that's something to to be aware of that you might think you're getting a deal, but in this case you're really not. I, I don't think it's worth the risk unless you're getting a substantial discount. I mean, I would think fifty to a hundred thousand dollars at a minimum of discount. Well, hopefully that was interesting to you. I, I find it absolutely fascinating that the gentleman, uh, the substitute trustee, that was the gentleman that was reading the information, had to uh, read out that two-page document to basically an empty uh, a courthouse uh, steps. So there was really nobody there except that one gentleman, but the property that he wanted to buy wasn't the one that... Uh, that was being read off. So, you know, as of 10:30 this morning, it was active. But then something happened where uh, they ran into the courthouse, the people who owned that first property that he wanted, and uh, must have paid off or filed for bankruptcy or something to stop the sale from happening. So, it's a very, uh, very interesting process. Again, like he's saying, I, I do agree with him. It's not for the faint of heart. It's uh, something that you should only do if you're really ready to get committed to the process. Uh, Daniel Odio signing off with Drodio Real Estate. Hope you found this information useful and uh, let us know how we can help you with your real estate needs.